are higher interest rates bullish for silver? This is the last report that we published in Seeking Alpha on February the 5th, 2018. Summary. Our analysis suggests that the U.S. dollar index may be due for a swing rally in the 93.50 range. Based on enormous global debt and ultra-low interest rates that cannot continue, we are bullish long-term gold. For silver, we have come to uh, we have come back to a level that is validating the capitulation or the completion of this correction, activating buy signals at the 1633 level. The US dollar in gold. In my last report published on January 29, 2018 on Seeking Alpha, we looked at the US dollar in gold relationship. We anticipated that the dollar had found some short-term support and had short-term potential to rally out to the 92 level while the gold market had reached an overbought position and was due for a correction and a time for consolidation. Last week, the U.S. dollar index closed at 89.04. It appeared uh, to be building a foundation for some kind of a bear flag for a potential swing rally in the 93.50 area, indicating a gap on the, ra on the daily charts uh, to be potentially filled as the target for this swing rally. In taking a look at the uh, gold market, we made a high of about 13.70 on January the 25th and we uh, corrected back down to a low of uh, 1330 last week. If you take a look at the report that we published on January 29 in relation to the supply and demand levels, we specially recommended exiting shorts on gold at the buy one and uh, buy, uh, uh, at the buy one level of 1336 to 1316. When we look at the low of the market last week, uh, of 1330, gold has activated the weekly buy one level of 1336. We, are, we recommended covering shorts and getting on the long side of the market with an initial stop on a closing basis of 1316. Some of the some of the factors that affected the the gold market were based on the economic data that came out on Friday. Gold futures ended lower Friday, down more than 1% for the week, based on a stronger-than-expected U.S. jobs report, which drove up U.S. dollar and Treasury yields. Uh, since the data laid the groundwork for a stronger U.S. interest rate response late this year, the data on Friday showed that the U.S. created 200,000 new jobs in January, beating the median forecast survey of leading economists. economists. Unemployment stayed at 4.1%, a 17-year low. According to MarketWatch, the government unemployment report fails into the camp of U.S. monetary policy hawks who want to see interest rates rise at a faster rate, said Jim Wyckoff, senior analyst at Kitco. As for the inflation watch, average hourly wages rose $0.09 cents or 0.3% to $26.74, which pushed the yearly rate to 2.9%. Uh, percent from 2.6 percent, marking the highest level since the end of the 2007-9 recession. In June 2009, analysts have stressed that the, that while inflation risk drives up bond yields, it, it also restores investors' faith in gold as a hedge. We have a long-term fundamental view for gold that is bullish. We are looking at the risk of higher interest rates in relation to world debt, which is running at record levels and are, I believe, unsustainable. This is particularly true if we see an aggressive monetary policy of rising interest rates, which will affect interest rates payments tremendously on a global debt. The effect could be enormous if interest rates rise for every 1% interest rate rise, it would increase approximately 600 billion or so in interest payments alone. The increase in the U.S. debt payments could exceed the entire U.S. military budget. 
The factor of the matter is that the uh, current economic monetary policy, which seems to influence interest rates, is running scared, based on the fact that the U.S. dollar has collapsed. Even though we may have a short-term correction in the U.S. dollar back up to the 92, 93 levels, it is in preparation for a larger wave down that indicates the U.S. dollar could decline to as low as 70 cent level by May of 2018. I believe that increasing the cost of money would only exasperate the tremendous burden of interest rate payments and put even more stress on the current balance sheet. It is my opinion that the reason why the Feds are in a such a need to raise interest rates is not because of the inflation factor getting out of hand. There is literally no inflation at hand. But to have the flexibility to lower interest rates in the future if things fall apart in the bond market as a consequence of bond vigilantes beginning to put pressure on world sovereign bonds to raise interest rates due to the high risk or to justify the high risk based on the record global sovereign debt, which could collapse the bond market globally. If such an event occur, the immediate policy that would need to be implemented would be to lower interest rates and implement another form of QE and some other name form or manner to prevent a worse collapse than the 2008 recession. If we take a look at the first time that the Feds raised interest rates in December of 2016, it was the bottom of the gold market. Are higher interest rates bullish for gold? What we have seen in 2017 is actually a test of that rally that we saw in 2016. If the price ownership and price discovery begins to be implemented in the physical cash market, we could begin to see a reversion in the price of gold, adjusting to what I believe would be levels based on real supply and demand factors globally. For that to happen, the price of gold would need to adjust to the equilibrium level on a long-term basis until we see there's a lacking of the manipulation of interest rates and the suppression in the price of gold and silver, we really don't have the true price discovery level that we can base the supply and demand factors for gold and silver on a real economic data. The fundamentals in gold and silver have been completely skewed since 2011. If you have been trading the gold market, fundamentally, you have experienced the wrath of the manipulation, which is essentially that the central bankers and governments have created an artificial paper market and create thousands of ounces of gold and silver supply that don't exist. By so doing, they have maintained control of gold and silver as a monetary unit against the U.S. dollar as a fiat currency by shorting the uh, COMEX futures contracts with contracts that basically are not backed by any physical commodity. The next six months are going to be crucial, especially sometime in May, as we accomplish these corrections in the U.S. dollar and in gold. The underlying trend that has been unfolding in the U.S. dollar for many, many years has been on a downtrend, which will continue. What we are beginning to see is the foundation in price of gold beginning to identify some real economic levels of demand and potentially factoring in what we can see coming is hyperinflation. I want to focus on the silver market, and in particular, as it appears to have come down to what we call harmonic levels, which is when the daily price trend aligns with the weekly and monthly trends indicating that prices have adjusted to the average price of all three trends. When it trades at exactly the same price, it is sending a harmonic signal that a new trend or cycle could develop from here. With the price of silver coming down to, uh, if it does come down to 1633 levels, last week in fact it came down, it activated the demand levels. Before we take a look at the supply and demand factors for silver, we're going to examine the weekly Fibonacci retracement and Fibonacci fans as it applies to the weekly chart in March silver that you see here. If you look at the chart 
on your screen the high that was made on September 4, 2017 at 1818 and a half. It gives us the top of that range of the high of the Fibonacci fence. The measurement of that fan is basically the low that was made in December 11, 2017 at 1555. This Fibonacci fan line gives us the resistance levels from the high to the low of the sequence. If you look at the price action in 2017 from December 2017, we began this uptrend that broke this fan line resistance levels that now have become support. Going back to the old saying, when resistance is broken, it becomes support. Long-term resistance of the Fibonacci fan trend lines have been broken and now they have become support. If we look at the low on December 11, 2017 of 1555 and we analyze it to the high on January 22, 2018 of 1771 recently made, we begin to see the Fibonacci fan line giving us a strong indication of the near-term support. And if you look at the chart, the market has come down almost to the third fan line of support right into that line that is approximately at 1655, the low that was made on January 29. The combination of the longer term trend fan lines with the intermediate to short term lines tell us that the market has come down to a pocket of support, which gives us an indication that the market has capitulated on this correction. If we add the Fibonacci retracements from the low that was made on December 11, 2017 to the recent high that we made on January 22nd of 1770, 50, we can see that we have identified the Fibonacci retracements in the price of silver that gives us a pretty strong indication of how far the retracement can go. What we accomplished last week with the low of 1652 was coming down right into that, this uh, Fibonacci retracement of 61.8 percent. Of 1643 that marks the golden ratio measurements that we use to identify the completion of an intermediate correction within a larger trending market. In this case we seem to be identifying that the lag that started on November 11, 2017 at a low of 1555 was the first leg of what appears to be a five wave pattern developing. According to Fibonacci retracement, unless we come down and test again the 1643 level to, uh, uh, of the 61.8% golden ratio retracement completion, I feel we are coming very close to identifying where the reversion of the market will occur in silver. For that, we're going to take a look at the uh, supply and demand report published February the 2nd, 2018. The uh, Silver Futures contract closed at 1671. The first filter that we use at the nine day moving average of uh, 1691, uh, the market closing below that point means that the market basically, the sediment is coming into this week a bit bearish. It also tells us that if it closes above 1691 sometime this week that it would negate this bearishness. The second filter that we use uh, in the VCPMI uh, weekly price momentum indicator is the average price for next week. According to the VCPMI, that average price is 1690. And the market closing below 1690 on Friday told us that the market was entering this week with a bearish price momentum sentiment. It, it, but if the price action reverts back up above 1690, it would negate this bearishness, this bearish sentiment to neutral. By the market on Friday closing below 1690, it activated the exit short positions at the buy one level of 1633 and the buy uh, level of 1595. The market is very clearly telling us to take profits on any shorts at 1633 and 1595 and go long on a reversal stop. If you go long, you use 1595 as your stop on a closing basis. And if you get activated, your stop would be 1595. Your target is identified at 1690 right away, which is the level above. If activated and closes above it, 
a second time, it would revert the bearish sentiment of the weekly price indicator to bullish, activating now the upper targets of the reversion to the mean, which it identifies and is to uh, uh, basically points to exit your long positions at the sell one level of 1728 and the sell two level of 1785. If you have multiple positions, you th these reversal levels of buy one and buy two levels and sell one and sell two levels are accurate 90% to 95% of the time. Conclusion. The uh, gold and silver ratio currently trading at 80 to 1 ounces of silver to gold are at record levels, indicating that the value has come back to silver once again. Looking at the Fibonacci fin and retracements, we have come uh, we have come back to a level that is validating the capitulation or completion of this correction. We have activated a buy signal at the 1633 level with a 1595 stop. If the price action closes above 1690 sometime this week, it would activate the upper targets of 1728 to 1785 for next week.